Welcome back to the channel guys and today we will be talking about the top 10 tanks I believe are good for dealing with uh, physical damage dealers. I also wanted to mention that I'm probably going to be taking a lazier route and more so utilizing World of Calc to kind of just like explain the characters. I mean they already do a good job of just like pretty much showing you all the information that I feel like you would need to know. But um, yeah let me know if you have like a preference if you want me to go back to the older style because that's not really that big of a deal. I definitely you know want to kind of just save myself a little bit of time and a little bit of stress when it comes down to it because the editing process can take like hours sometimes so outside of that just be sure to support the video support the channel any way you possibly can and without further ado i really wanted to start it out with talking about an honorable mention and that being whisper i do feel like her low cost is something that was noteworthy uh, for limited situations but something that i definitely want to make notice of and i don't want to have to repeat throughout the whole video is that when you're trying to like have a tank in a pvp type situation you're probably better off just trying to re-roll them like obviously after reincarnating them as much as possible i feel like if you can just max out your tank you want as much hp and just things that are just going to give them more survivability you know damage dealing in case you're trying to utilize them that way i would imagine but definitely just for the defensive things the crit evasion anything that helps keep your tank alive is just going to make it easier for them to do their job but when it comes to whisper like i feel like you could take her in multiple ways even though like with her dream ability it's more so like catered toward missile and pierce damage it's really going to depend on the kind of cards that you have as well as like maybe your trust stones that you would want to like have an overall theme with her something else that i feel like is really important is just the all attack type resistance is going to make it really difficult to um try and debuff her with imperils and this can also be stacked with trust stones so that's probably something you would want to do and outside of that, I feel like this is also a pretty important stat. Um, having a character being able to just outright have native hate on them without having to go into a buff, I feel like is just probably preferred. And that's definitely going to be a common theme that you see amongst the characters that I felt like I wanted in the top 10. As far as her supports go, I do feel like Divine Protection is an absolute must. Um, AoE resistance at this point is just probably one of the more important defensive stats in the game, as well as single target resistance. Especially with where we're at in the game, you just really want to have as many backup defensive stats as you possibly can, aside from just defense and spirit at this point. Now, you can utilize Blade Soul, but you do have to keep in mind that it's going to lower her defense, and I don't think that's something you necessarily want to do unless you have the means to really make her evasive. So maybe you're running her with like maybe somebody like Addison Ray or or something like you know to kind of give her like a guaranteed hit kind of like you know defensive thing as well as some courage so that's more so a case by case kind of thing it really depends on what your account has to offer to even like do something like that and the attack is definitely not bad and since we're really only talking about being a physical damage tanking unit i'll just mention night lore i mean like the fact that she can like you know increase her um slash pin is something that can always be good hp is always really good Maybe you're using something like the Blood Sword, so maybe she can just get some HP back after she does a little bit of damage. But we'll talk a little bit more about the Blood Sword the further we move on. As far as her counters go, I would have to say that Sword Guard is the most important one that's down here. Um, having a chance to counter all damage and reduce the damage that's taken is not limited to physical or magical damage, so this is going to be just universal. And um, I always feel like Sword Guard is something that just pairs very well with Bradley's TMR or just any means of like raising reaction block rate something that you can outright put on a trust stone and outside of that you can use third eye once again if you're trying to go for that evasion build and now that we've got to her skills i'm only going to make mention of like specific skills i feel like i'm going to do this for every character that's actually on the list just things that i feel like are just important for the overall theme of a tank uh debuffs things that keep the character alive maybe things that keep your allies alive to some degree but more so like i said it's going to be based around them maybe it gives them hate so starting out with Divine Shelter, I feel like is an absolute must. This is something that you definitely need her to go into. It's going to give her a region, increase her healing power, uh, protecting shell, which is always pretty important. We're also looking at the um, elemental debuff resistance that you just saw previously when it came down to uh, her awakening or dream ability. I forgot which one it was on, but this is something that can just stack. This is already going to like what go up to 200, including both of them. And keep in mind that you can also put equipment that will stack with this, uh, trust stones that will stack with this. You know, you can't have like equipment and something on your trust stones. It'll obviously take the larger stat and then the other one will be pretty much nullified or maybe just not take into account as much. So definitely something to kind of look out for. The increase in healing power, like I said, when it comes down to the blood sword is going to give her like, you know, that heal. Uh, she can attack, get that heal. And then like once her turn ends, the uh, region will kick in and she'll get that heal as well. And I personally feel like that's pretty viable. It just really depends on who she's going up against and how well you built her to go up against it. 
Next up, we will be talking about Quadra Break, which is probably the second most important skill. It, it's debatable, it really depends, but um, the Slash Attack pin is like okay, but we're mainly looking at the decrease in magic attack and agility. This is also gonna be a way of manipulating CT to make um, the enemy team slower because she's already like kind of like on the slow side, especially if you're not using something that's giving her haste or maybe something that can increase her movement. On top of that, she's somebody who's also AP starved. So I do feel like she's one of those characters that can really benefit from having like a really good TMR, uh, something that you could possibly use twice if you're trying to use her for like guild battle. But nonetheless, this is really, really important to use. It really sucks that it's not an AOE, you know, something that can only hit one person at a time, but nonetheless, it's really powerful. But something that I feel like is a little bit more important is the protection break. This is gonna lower defense and spirit by a decent amount. The modifier on it is not bad, so she's gonna deal a decent amount of damage and it's gonna be a means of her like pretty much getting aggro, you know, raising her hate. So it's pretty much like a nerfed version of Taunting Blade to a degree, only like in the mindset, I guess, of range. Like it's not gonna have as much range. It's not gonna be an AOE. But nonetheless, I do feel like this is a pretty important skill, especially like if her hate runs out or maybe like it gets, you know, debuffed or something. So if you find yourself like maybe in that situation where you're like, I don't really like the protection break, I would prefer to use taunting spell. That's always an option for her. Uh, she can still go into this just because she's one of those wonky characters that has like a, a I don't want to say like a good amount of attack or um, magic, but it's something where you can kind of take her wherever you really want to, just depending on the Esper, the cards that you have attached to her. But personally for me, like whenever I find myself using her, I just feel like that defense and spirit um, debuff is just a little bit more tantalizing than just like outright raising her hate. But overall, like I said, Whisper could not make the top 10, mainly because she's just so difficult to build. I feel like even to a degree, like a sub veteran, like somebody who's like, you know, on the middle, maybe like a dolphin is going to kind of struggle to like get the most out of her, especially like if you don't have her rerolled. And I also didn't want to put her on the top 10 because I kind of recommend using her shards like that you can get in the mock shop to build other characters. I don't feel like she's going to be like the craziest thing. And out of all the characters that are gonna be on this list, she needs to be rerolled like really bad. Like the reincarnation's one thing, but she needs those rerolls just to just give her an opportunity. And even with all of that, she's still gonna be probably the slowest one on the board, which is definitely why I was saying like, yeah, you probably want something with haste, something with moves, something to just kind of get her in the fight a little bit sooner. Uh, being AP starved is something else that's gonna be kind of a nuisance. I just want to see a new version of her, a more powerful version. I personally don't really care what element, but Whispers, I really love her design. I think she's a really cool character. So hopefully we can get that in the future. Maybe like on the next poll, that's somebody we can vote for, you know, something. But nonetheless, I really do like the character. I just don't think she's like the best. So starting out with number 10, we will be looking at Moraga. Moraga, I think got a pretty good mastery ability. Uh, one of the bigger things that we're looking at is definitely the physical barrier. Now something to keep in mind, if you're using this for like guild battle, um, it'll start at the beginning of the fight. So if you can survive the first fight, you know, the barrier's been destroyed or whatever. If he can make it to that next one, he'll get this barrier again. And this is like a 50% decrease in physical damage. And this is pretty important. I feel like this is something that's also very unique because he doesn't have to go into uh, saintly wall or something like that. So the usability on this is actually pretty decent. Um, he also gets that native hate, even if it's not by much, I feel like this is something else that just kind of, you know, really helps him. Because even outright, if they have to go into like maybe taunting blade or taunting spell or whatever, you know, the skill is to increase their hate, outright having it like in general at the beginning of the fight can kind of like alter somebody's setup or make them just kind of move in a place where they don't want to. It just gives you that option pretty much. And it's definitely better to have it than not, like in all honesty. Um, his dream ability is honestly not that bad. Um, AOE resistance is, like I said, once again, something you really want. Uh, slash resistance is also pretty good just because, you know, slash damage is pretty common. As far as his supports go, he has a decent amount of options I feel are definitely worth uh, noting. Um, Mark of the Savage, you don't have to worry about that because you're not gonna wanna use him as an evasive character. So the HP increase is pretty cool. Uh, Holy Knight's protection is probably something you definitely want to use for the defense and the HP. Everything else is gonna be on a case by case kind of situation. Like the agility and the luck can be pretty good. Uh, luck, you know, if you're trying to make him more accurate, maybe you want him to do more critical damage. And just in general, having more agility is something that can kind of help you depending on just what your overall scheme is. Do you want your team to be somebody who blitzes or do you want your team to be somebody who just kind of sits back and waits for everybody to kind of like crowd together. Then you just go in and destroy them after you like, you know, got all your buffs on and stuff. 
and I feel like Shikuchi, um, any means of giving your character move and jump is just something that can just be pretty good depending on the map. Some of these maps can be a little bit wonky and um, like they'll be somewhat close to each other, but the fact that they have one jump like keeps them away enough that they won't use like a buff that you feel like they would really need to get off on like an ally or something like that. So it gives him that variety that I feel like is pretty important when it comes down to just something that, you know, I wish other characters kind of had, but we're not going to make mention of that. Regardless, it's nice to have these options. As far as his counter, uh, Serpent's Grudge can be pretty good. Paladin's Guard is probably the better one, especially like if you're just trying to outright be a tank. Uh, gives him a chance to counter as well. Now, as for his skills, I would have to say that Serpent's King stance is pretty important. I mean, it's kind of obvious why the defense, the spirit is going to be pretty important. The uh, defense pin is like, okay, but at the same time, like I said, just having that outright defense buff is pretty nice. Uh, the spirit's kind of like showing you, I guess he could kind of go like to be like a magic tank to some degree, but I would, I would probably just more so try to go for that physical damage uh, tanking. I feel like it's more reliable and um, he just has a lot more that's going to be more effective toward that. Ruinous Axe is something else that I really wanted to highlight. Uh, this is giving him some human killer, uh, the ability to dispel buffs, haste, physical damage increases and magic damage increases. Like this is something that can definitely help keep your teammates alive. Something that can, you know, just kind of just like nerf the enemy team that you're going up against. So he's not going to take as much damage as well. This can also like get rid of things like hate and the modifier on it's not like the worst thing in the world. As far as his sub jobs go, I feel like you're probably going to use Paladin. Like just in my opinion, I do feel like this is going to give him access to Taunting Blade, which is like his only means of like really raising his hate if it gets slapped off of him. It's an AOE, like I said, good modifier on it and um, just useful when it really comes down to it. And aside from that, you're also getting Immortal Spirit. This is going to be his courage and, uh, you know, courage got that buff to, you know, have nullification to paralysis and confusion. So that's pretty good. Something to keep in mind why he is number 10 is he only gets one cast of the courage. So his usability, I feel like, is at its prime in the first fight uh, if you're using him for uh, guild battle arena class match all that other stuff's not going to matter as much but definitely not going to be as good the second time around or maybe he just goes for a different scheme and you planned ahead for that but definitely something that i feel like doesn't give him as much usability and a little bit of an extra bonus he does have dream within a dream and um that's something that can be kind of good for if you're you know trying to use him for a guild raid so i did give him like a little bit of like i don't know i, I thought like this was like worth mentioning and i do want to mention like things like this when it comes down to it because maybe you just don't consider him for guild raid or something like that definitely not a bad skill to have and um that's all i really wanted to say about him coming at number nine we have engelbert and engelbert definitely more usable than moraga like hands down um the defense increase is something that's pretty cool the aoe resist once again really good uh native hate and even more so he gets single target resistance that's also extremely good agility is not bad i mean i'm sure he's somebody who's on the slower side uh his low cost is something else that i feel edges him out over moraga and just overall in general he's not a bad character to have like he's somebody that even like with where i'm at in the game i still contemplate building this guy like pretty much every single time i look at him just like uh yeah especially like even with like pve it doesn't feel like evasion is as powerful as it used to be so any kind of means of just like having somebody else be targeted and maybe like we can just take an AOE hit or something like that is probably just more preferable than them like outright getting just like destroyed. But nonetheless, uh, Engelbert, I think is somebody who has holed up pretty well, honestly, like with the changes of everything. Now, unlike Moraga, this is immensely better. This is going to raise his defense, his HP, and increase his healing power, which I feel like is something that caters really well, and it's something that we can actually, you know, further talk about. Like, having an increase in healing power is so important, and even though Moraga does have a means of doing damage absorption, it's just not really all that viable when he's already decreasing his healing power. So this is definitely a bonus when it comes down to just, like, trying to use Engelbert. I feel like it's just really good. Uh, Divine Protection, once again, for the AoE resist, the debuff resistance is something that can also kind of work in your favor and i do believe he can use the blood sword so if you want to like kind of increase your attack um you could take that route i don't know if i would recommend that i think he's just better off just being a tank but i've seen him pop off a couple of times i think it's really going to depend on like i said once again your cards you know things like that if you want to try and take him to more of a damage absorption kind of build 
Now we're going to definitely start getting into a theme um, as far as the counters go. We're going to see a lot of uh, mentionings of the same thing. So I'm not going to like continue to explain it. You go with Paladin's Guard or Sword Guard. I feel like these are like the more crucial ones for the obvious reasons. Now as far as his main job goes, I do have to make mention of Saintly Healing. I feel like you typically always leave this on. I don't feel like there was like ever a time that um, I was using somebody who had their, like, their sub job or their main job being Paladin. I was like, damn, I wish I didn't have Saintly Healing on. Very useful. Um, it's not gonna be like the biggest kill or anything like that, but it's gonna be possibly enough to like, you know, give them like a little bit of cushion. And sometimes that can make the difference as far as survivability. Immortal Conviction is going to be his courage. He's going to get two casts of this. So this is something that I feel like definitely gives him the edge over Miraga. Like, you know, he didn't have that already. But something else to also keep in mind is that he is getting an elemental chain resistance. So this is just going to make it somewhat difficult, I guess, to um, chain on him. Like, it's not going to, like, guarantee, you know, that the chain's not going to happen. But it's just another means of just, you know, a defensive stat. And you have to think of it like that. Uh, I think it's just as long as, like, the courage is on. So that is something to kind of look out for. But at the end of the day, like I said, two casts of this uh, makes him just extremely more useful when it comes to guild battle. Saintly Wall is something else that I feel like is probably something you would want to leave on. Uh, physical damage reduction by a pretty good amount for three hits, um, increasing his critical evasion, which if you don't know what that does, it just, it makes it harder to like get hit with a critical attack. It's not gonna like affect you getting hit. It's just gonna, like I said, avoid the critical um, stack. So that can sometimes matter, especially if they have like a crit, crit damage build. Saintly Cross is something else you would probably leave on. This is gonna, you know, be damage absorption, dispel debuffs. It's a decent modifier on it as well. So, I mean, also an AOE, that's something I've forgot to mention. Uh, good amount of casts on it, but nonetheless, like I said, it kind of like further represents that um, Blood Sword build maybe you wanna go for, because I don't even really know like if he can even use swords. Maybe he uses like uh, great swords. But I feel like he uses swords, so uh, Blood Sword is probably an option. But overall in general, it's just gonna help him stay alive and it's not bad to build off of that with your Trust Stones, give him healing power up or something off of a weapon. And I feel like I can say the same thing about Retribution Drain. Like he just has a lot of things to absorb um, the damage that he's dealt. And it's, it's a really good stat, uh, better modifier. Also gonna increase his defense pin by a good amount. So you can kind of like get an overall theme. And this is just me spitballing with the guy. Like you can use him like a different way. Maybe you just wanna go outright for defense and just more so like kind of play off of like other things, like depending on like the characters obviously that you have. And before I leave his main job, I don't know how I missed that, but he also like off of his courage, this is gonna be a means of increasing his hate. So that's also like pretty important. I don't know how I like skipped over it. There's a lot of crap here. So yeah, definitely wanted to go back and like, yeah, he, he does that. So that's also like, like I said, pretty important and probably like one of the first things he's gonna go into anyway. So you don't have to like really worry about like having hate problems. The last two skills I wanted to talk about definitely is arm break. Um, you're probably gonna see me make mention to this skill a lot uh, down the line because disable is just immensely powerful. I feel like it's something that is just extremely good. Uh, Divine Healing, also I forgot about this skill as well. But um, yeah, definitely Arm Break I feel is, is pretty powerful. But yeah, I forgot um, this raises your healing power. Like I said, there's so many different changes that they've made to these um, like older skills, these older um, jobs that it's like, sometimes you kind of like take these older skills for granted because I think Divine Healing was like something that only increased like your HP and restored like a little bit of HP or something like that. So these things are newer and it's probably worth going into instead of using that sub main job. And outside of that, I did want to talk about Chakra just because of the region, but it's really hard to say if you use this or not. You possibly have like a different healer on the team or you have, you know, like a sub healer or something. And I feel like he's going to do such a good job of sustaining himself that you might not even need this. So you could just go with Knight, go with the arm break. Or maybe not and just like outright have him doing enough damage and um, sustaining himself through the retribution drain and the uh, saintly cross but nonetheless like i said he's a really good character and i think somebody who's definitely still in the top 10 for sure coming in at number eight we have warrior of light and um even with him getting his reincarnation like i think like when it was freshly introduced into the game it was kind of like a, a difficult thing i think it was like around the same time when sephiroth was like still like really popular he was kind of a nuisance, but I do feel like he's been figured out to some degree. Now, even though you do see like the magic resistance and he is somebody that can be used, like I said, as a magic tank and a physical tank. Uh, we're looking at the defense mainly. Uh, he gets that native hate as well. 
and something else is he has that HP uh, regen, but it's going to be off of 50% instead of like, you know, the typical 20%. Also getting healing power up from his reincarnation, uh, the HP increase. Now this is a character that I don't have, but like I said, from the outside looking in, uh, first warrior looks immensely appealing, uh, the defense. Uh, if you're trying to target dark teams, maybe Providence of Darkness could be something that you would want to go for, but once again, you have to keep in mind this is going to give him magic resist. Quelling Chaos is something else that's like kind of like, eh, it, it's going to be a case-by-case -case thing. I do feel like Dragon Lore is going to be a little bit more appealing to me, so probably just go with uh, the first warrior and Dragon Lore just to give him that healing power increase. Uh, giving him more HP is always going to be something that's going to be beneficial. And with that said, like I said, you can go with Warrior's Pride, Magic Guard, or Dragon's Blade. Not going to make mention to Magic Guard as much. But Dragon's Blade, you know, if you want to try and take that HP damage absorption uh, route, pairs well with the healing power up. But personally, I do feel like Warrior's Pride is just outright better. Um, a chance to counter as well as just increasing his defense. And this can possibly stack. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. As far as his main job, we're looking at Brave Presence for sure. The defense and the spirit increase. Um, this is going to be his hate as well. Something that you definitely need him to go into, I feel, is just really important as far as him being a tank. Um, Invincible Shield 2, uh, this is going to reduce the damage that he's going to take, so that's also something that's universal and pretty powerful, I would have to say, you know, something that I feel like you're going to need him to definitely go into. Now, I could be mistaken, because I'm thinking he uses this on himself and the allies. The regen, I feel like, is at least, like, worth mentioning, but my issue with, like, you know, using regen, like, outright um, as a tank or whatever, doesn't really feel as viable. I feel like regen's better used whenever it's coming from a uh, support character, somebody who's like in the back line. Maybe they can like get you that extra turn because it feels like when you use regen outright in the beginning of a fight, it feels like that first turn is definitely wasted. And then like if the map is not like small enough, you're gonna waste that second turn of regen and you're only gonna get that one turn of regen. So it's it's really debatable, I guess, to even use this. Outside of that, I do wanna talk about Stop Strike for sure. If uh, you're going up against a character that has a weakness to this, I feel like that's pretty important. It, you know, is gonna raise the chance of it possibly popping off because if you can inflict this, it's pretty much game over for whoever you put this on. If there's no means of uh, removing it or nullifying against it initially, I feel like it's probably worse than anything else in the game. Like slow can be pretty bad and depending on who it gets landed on, it could be worse than disable. Disable is like bad, but if they're fast enough, they can break that chain, if, especially if they can like survive the damage. Outright takes the character like out of the game. And um, especially if they're a tank, they're just gonna get blasted for like those 30 ticks and um, probably be dead. So definitely the most effective outside of like, I guess like Petrify or something like that. And then of course Dragon's Kin that's going to give him like the attack and the protect if you know you want to take that route I guess. I just feel like Warrior of Light honestly stat wise is just a really good character. His cost is also something that I feel like is not too high not too low so it, it gives you just you know a variety of uh, characters you can use when it comes to like a limited situation. And for him being somebody who doesn't have courage or re-raise I mean he can get these things from other characters so that's something else that I think like I'm getting to a point where I can't really like put anything against the character just because they don't have them. Uh, there are TMRs for that, like I said, Addison Ray, uh, Shalze. There are characters who can, like I said, supplement that initial need of something else, like uh, characters like Dwayne, I feel like can really benefit from Courage. But in general, his overall kit is just really usable. I don't personally feel like he's ever truly like been the number one tank. Like maybe like when he first came out or something, but I wasn't around when he first came out. I just feel like he's always been somebody who's just been in the middle of the pack. But even with me saying that, like, if you have the right build, you have the overall theme, he can definitely succeed. He's He can be tanky. You just really have to cater to him to uh, do those things, like, in all honesty. But definitely not a bad character, even though he's on the lower end of the tier list. And next up, we have uh, King Mont, somebody that, like I said, reminds me a lot of um, Warrior of Light. They have that similar, I think, uh, HP increased. Uh, we'll look at that when it comes to Destiny of Leonis. But things that I like about Mont definitely are the AoE resistance, the HP increase, the uh, increase in elemental resistance is always just something that's really good. And something to keep in mind is you can use uh, Glacella's sword, uh, Summer Glacella, to further increase that. He can utilize that, so that's something to definitely keep in mind just to make him a little bit more tanky. Uh, the piercing missile resist is definitely pretty good, but yeah, I'm, I'm loving the AoE anytime I see that on a tank. Uh, support wise, we're definitely looking at Destiny of Leonis. Like I said, it's going to give him that heal, very similar to um, Warrior of Light. This is also going to be a means of getting hate without having to go into a buff. 
HP and defense, always really good to see. Nightblade Mastery is something that I feel like can, you know, give him some accuracy, because I feel like if he can go into his limit break and inflict that disable, which, we'll, you know, we'll look at that a little bit more, it's it's Nighty Night, I, I, I believe, or maybe it's like Berserk. Yeah, I think it's Berserk. Really, really crucial, and um, it hurts a lot. The attack increase is also pretty good. Uh, Inner Flame, I guess if like you're finding yourself hurting for AP, this could be somewhat important. And um, like I said, having Shadow Runner and Shikuchi, just really good for that, you know, variety pretty much, depending on the map. As far as those counters go, I would have to just recommend Astrologer's Protection. I feel like this is just universally just the best one that he has, a chance to counter, reduces damage taken. Now looking at his main job, I've always felt like since I actually have Mont, using him um, is better off, like depending on the map, you go into Mercy's Grace because I feel like giving that elemental resistance is not only going to be good for him, but it's going to be good for your allies. It also has like a decent range, like a full on, you know, area around himself, a pretty potent skill since he already has that initial elemental resistance. So it's something that can just kind of further stack onto it. Fangs of Leonis is the one I was like mixing his limited break up with. So he can inflict disable, uh, same reason why I mentioned before. It's one of the top three inflictions that you can even put like universally on a character. He also has means of raising his own hate using proclamation. This is also going to raise his agility, which can kind of, you know, work with um, Shadow Runner. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. And then after that, I'd have to say Caitlyn's Pride is also something that can be pretty good depending on the situation. Um, a defense increase, the restoring CT. And it really depends on, like I said, the map. I feel like if the map is too short, you probably want to drop Proclamation. Just use Mercy's Grace and then go into Caleb's Pride. Um, as far as the sub main job goes, Breath of Serenity is um, something that you may want to like consider using to a degree. But it, like I said, it, it makes me think of like that same thing I was talking about. Also did want to mention that he does have Dream Within a Dream. So yeah, that's always there. But um, his limit break, I feel like is definitely like something that got a huge upgrade with the, I forgot what the hell that stuff is called, but um, it's gonna increase the damage that they take. They'll still, you know, use basic attacks. This skill is impactful when it comes down to like, Mont can win games alone if he can get this skill off and hit everyone with it. But with the upgrade, he's gonna get a reduction to physical damage taken. It's gonna lower his AP cost. So I do feel like that's pretty important. But you have to keep in mind that there has to be a friendly unit within range and i do believe that this is the range which is not like the worst thing so maybe you were running him with like soul or something you know along those lines somebody maybe like that's supporting him and just staying somewhat close to him now it's the same situation when it comes down to warrior of light like he doesn't have the courage he doesn't have re-raise he can get this from shalze like it's like i said once again becoming a point where it's not that big of a deal and i'm not gonna give you like an asterisk next to your name just because you don't have a means of doing that 